Thanks, Felicia. Hey guys, happy Friday. I want to say a quick welcome back to Kermi. We've got Kermi in the chat today. And um, today's class is a really fun one. It's gift ready bracelets that can be put into an ornament and given as a gift for um, the holidays or just, you know, put into like a greeting card. And so um, the way that I've been putting them on is I just kind of attach them to the back of this really cool. Oh, thanks, Felicia. Back to this really cool ornament. And it um, can be hung on the tree. And so in class today, I'm going to do a lot of stuff. I'm going to show you guys, of course, uh, a recap of Odd Count Peyote Stitch with Delicas. And I'm going to show some Odd Count Turns. And then I'm going to show a finishing method that gives you this really cool point that you can put your chain and your jump rings onto. And then just finish your bracelet that way. And then I just made these little cutouts with a little, um, you know, punch to do... It, it kind of makes the bracelet give something to cling to on the back so that it helps it stay in position while it's hanging inside your card. And it's just a really fun way to give a beautiful peyote bracelet. And the patterns that um, we have in the handout, they're the same pattern. So you can use the same word chart for every time you make it, but there's a bunch of different colors. I've got three on the mat here. And then if you look at the, um, you know, when you signed up for class, you probably saw this really pretty red one. And that one is uh, made with the beads that I have here. And I also have this one called, um, well, we didn't really name this one. It just says cobalt and blue and turquoise um, with a little bit of uh, violet color in there. So that's more of like a spring version that you can do if you're interested in trying those out. Um, but so yeah, in class today, my main goal is to get, um, get a odd count peyote stitch refresher going. And um, also to do a little bit about pattern reading. So I know that's always something everyone appreciates hearing a little extra about every time. So we'll talk about pattern reading. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about beads and finishing, making it go to a point. And then right at the end, I'm going to pull in some paper and we'll make a, we'll make an ornament. So let's get started. I've got um, a lot to cover. And what we were thinking is I know on Zoom, it can be just a little, a little challenging to see stuff. We're going to, we're going to demo with Delica's you know, as well. But I thought just to start, I've got some larger beads out. And the larger beads might just be a little easier to see in a demo for how to start it. And uh, as you get going, it'll be easier to understand the smaller format bead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a thicker thread. Now, before, um, before I take these off the mat, I'll explain what I actually used. I used size 11 Delicas. And the colors are in the patterns. So when you get your pattern PDF, um, what I've got in there is just, it's just a reference to say, hey, refer to the pattern. And what that means is to go check out these right here. So the header of all of your patterns, you're going to see DB200, which is the white. And in this case, this is 0001. So that's the hematite. Here's a silver lined gold. Here's that limey green. And here's the dark hunter green. So just for example, and that's what I used here in this one. Um, another thing to note, and I got asked this the other day when I was teaching a, a similar class um, with peyote, is on the word chart, let me get you guys the word chart, you'll notice it says left and right and left and right. And what that's referring to is the direction. Because as you add rows, you're going back and forth. And when I do my stitching, I'm super confusing. I flip it like a pancake back and forth. So that left and right to me gets a little lost. It's just a nice reference if you're trying to find where you are. Like if you lost your place, it's helpful for that. But, uh, and some people really do use it. Um, I use it less. I mostly just go by the word chart and then I keep track of where I am with a ruler. And then I mark my position. If I'm going to stop and go away, I'll like put a little dot at the end and then come back and erase it when I'm getting started again. Um, so that's how, that's how I do, usually I do peyote from the word chart. Um, and what else can I share about patterns? So pattern reading and peyote stitch reading. Um, one of the things, if you guys have been in our like beginner peyote class, one of the ways you can figure out where you are is you can count your side beads. So you'd say you count one, two, three, four, five, six. That still works here, but I want to give you a heads up warning that in odd count, there'll be a position where you don't have the edge bead on there and you might miscount based on that and it'll throw you off by a row. So it's a little more important to really keep track of your position in the word chart on odd count. Not, you know, it's not impossible. You just have to take into account that 
at the end of row three, you still have this bead to add. And if you haven't added it yet, you might think you've only done three rows and really you're supposed to be starting row four, just as an example. So uh, the tail position on this pattern, in case anyone's wondering where, where's row one? Row one is starting here. So your tail is gonna be coming in. Um, you're gonna string 5A, two, three, four, five A. Then you'll string one D and then you'll string five more A. That's rows one and two. It's written on the word chart like that. Five A, one D, five A. When you come back to add row three, you'll be coming out of that bead. And then you'll be heading in to this bead. You'll pick up pick up this bead, go through this one, pick up this one, go through this one. You'll pick up this one, go through that one, pick up, go through, pick up, go through, and then you'll find yourself with nowhere to go. You need to add this bead. So we do an odd count turn. We come through here, pick up this bead, and go through here, and go through there. Then come back through it and start row four. So row four actually starts with that bead. So. I think me just throwing it out there, word chart way easier than following the graph for odd count. But that said, lots of people use the graph. Um, so, but I'm gonna be using the word chart. I'm gonna be going just row by row, just reading through it. And um, and then at the end, we'll do a decrease. But I usually do the whole pattern, I create the whole thing first, and then I do my my decrease ends. So it's just easier to easier to see what you're doing. All right, so let's just jump in. And if, um, if I miss any quick things or questions, just, Please let me know. I know this is a a more detailed class. You know, it's kind of a, a lot to cover. Um, I used, let me show you really quick what I used for thread. I used good thread. And this is a really beautiful one for small delicas. It's perfect for size 11. So that is what I used on my designs. Um, quickly, when I demo with this big one, I am going to pull in some wildfire. And that's just so you can see what I'm doing. But um, I'm working with a large bead here just for this first intro here just so you can really see what's going on but it's not what i used in the uh in the you know actual samples okay so i'm gonna flatten this end really quick got that going and i'm gonna get my needle so beading needle you can use size 11 size 10 size 12. delicates have a pretty generous hole diameter so whatever needle you are using is probably going to work just fine. I think what I've got in front of me right now is a, a size 10. All right. For how much thread to cut? So with, with the, this design and others like it, you're going to add thread once, maybe twice at least. So what you want to do is um, cut a link that's comfortable for you so you don't get knots. And it's really easy to get knots when you're working with a really long strand. So I would say keep it under your wingspan for me, it's about 60 inches. Most people, it's about 60 inches. Um, so if you keep it under your wingspan, you're less likely to get a knot for some reason. I'm not sure why. Another thing you can do is you can fold over, fold over a lot more thread to give you less, um, less pulling through. And yeah, the good thread comes in, in Michael's, they have it in black and white. So um, also got the black color. And so I'm going to start rows one and two, and then I'll show you the pattern one more time. So we're going to pick up 5A, 1D, 5A. And this is just stringing at the moment. So, um, and I also lay out my colors as A, B, C, D. Right now I've just got them in a pile, but when I am, you know, going full speed on a pattern, I'll go and do A, B, C, D, and just lay them out in a row right along the top. Here's three, here's four and five, 1D, Four and five. Okay. So just like that. I just want to get those on there. And for this design, when you're starting your piece, leave a pretty good tail. Leave, leave yourself enough to do the decreasing with, because we're going to be doing, bringing it to a point. And so you'll need to be able to create a few more rows to bring that down to a point. So give yourself enough, I would say 20 inches at least, to give you enough for that. But if you forget, it's okay, because you can always come back and you can add um, add thread to at your beginning to do your closure, which is actually 
a great thing to do anyway. So there's always a way, so don't sweat it. But there's rows one and two. All we did was string them. So we just read our pattern and we just strung rows one and two. So now row three, we're gonna do this, you know, one bead by one bead. So I'm gonna pick up one A, skip a bead, go through the next bead, pick up another A, skip a bead, go through. We're just gonna do that for a total of this row here. So here's one, one A here. And we're gonna skip that bead and just go through the next one. And you'll get something that looks like that. But don't worry, just pull it. It'll it'll pop even easier when you're working with the um, the good thread and the eleven odelica, but you can always help it. But what you're going for is one that'll look like that. So one bead sitting on top of the others. And we're going to do that one more time. The next bead in row three is another A. So I'm going to pick up an A. And then I'm going to skip the next bead. And go through the one after that. And then again, I'm just going to pull that working and tail thread apart. And with any luck, it'll just pop right in place. So the next bead I need is a D. And I know that's my green here. I need to do two greens. So we're gonna skip skip the next bead and go through the one after that. And pick up one more. And so I'm working on row three right now. We, we strung rows one and two, that was 12 beads in total. And then I'm just picking up all the beads from row three, which is just a, A, two Ds, and two As. And right now I'm working on that second D here. So I skip this bead, go through the next bead. And don't worry, oops, I didn't skip a bead, sorry guys. Um, don't worry too much if, um, something that usually can happen when you are working on these is you can, end up with it spinning on you. Mine's not doing that at the moment, but sometimes um, the rows will spin. So like, for example, my new beads currently, they're all settling themselves on this side, which is what I want. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes they spin. So before you add row four, I'm gonna show you how to do a quick double check and make sure that you're going into the right bead for row four. After row four, it's smooth sailing. It stops spinning. Everything's way better, but, um, totally totally honesty here i have had to restart my pieces before because of that spin and i didn't notice and i kept going the good news is you can fix it by just taking your tail out and undoing the first four rows and then just stitch them the only problem is you got to stitch them in reverse the, the pattern will be flipped so not 100 percent easy but still doable to fix it and i've been there so all right so um two two a uh, this is the first of my 2A for row three. So I'm almost done. So far, everything's just regular good old peyote. Skip this bead. Go through the next one. Pull tight. Oops. That one. That thread went around the back. We want to keep that on the front. There we go. Okay, tighten everything down. All right, so now we've got this. This is the odd count turn. And when it comes to working with cylinder beads, I just wanted to say really quick why I'm gonna be doing the weave around instead of the pick up the side thread method. If some of you guys might've been with us when we did with an 8-0 round seed bead, we did a stitch um, odd count where we were using that thread bridge on the side to turn. Um, if you weren't there for that class, don't worry about it. We're, we're doing something different today. The reason for that is I find with cylinder beads that they, um, they sit kind of side by side wonky when I do the thread turn thing. So, I mean, it sort of works, but not 100%. It's harder for me to do that. So what I find myself doing with cylinder bead is I do the turn. The, the um, it looks like an actual X when you do the turn. And I'll show you in the handout where you can see a diagram of what we're about to show. So, so far, we're right here. And we're going to make what looks like an X. We're going to go through the, the last bead, pick up a new bead, and then just go do do. So in an X shape. 
Wanda is saying there's some confusion with the word chart. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Cindy Santa. Is um Carmi, let me know if there's something I need to slow down and go back to you. If there's something going on with the word chart. Danielle, I'm gonna just have you keep going and okay. um we'll address the word chart later. Okay. Is there um is it some is it significant or like seems like it's just more than a few people have asked it's about um um the directions uh row 1a 3d to 1a but okay. um i think i think you're good to keep uh demoing and then i'll okay. see if i can figure it out all right yeah i'm worried that i've got a different versions in front of me i work on these over long periods of time and so I make sure I've got that going right. So, um, but this this direction for how to do an odd count turn, it's um, not pattern dependent. This is how you do it regardless of what pattern. So um, I'm going to add my last, my last A bead here. Let me pick it up. Oh, sorry. From where I'm here, I want to go through, go through that, the loose bead. So go through this one. And then I'm going to pick up the last bead for row three. And what you want to do is go back through that last bead. And don't worry, we're going to be doing this more than once. So you have to do it every other row. But there you go. That in a nutshell is, is the turn. And everything that we have left to do from here is getting back where we want to be. And so here's where we're going to make that X I was talking about. You want to go through one of the beads. Let me just make sure I go under that strand there. So we'll go through one and then turn and come through the bead on the other side. So far so good. I'm just going to tighten everything up. Go back through that middle bead. And from here, um, we're going to go through the one the tail's coming out of because the goal is to head this way. We want to be going that direction back toward the um, the starting point for row four. So keep going through that. And then just pull these apart again. Make everything tighten up a little bit. And so far, so good. Got that that right there all right and then next i'm going to pick up row four so let's bring row four over got one a three d and one a so i'll pick up First, I need to go back through this bead here. We'll pick up the one A. And then I'm gonna pick up the D beads again. This time I need three D beads. And this is just regular peyote now. We're just picking up the bead, going through the next up bead. There we go. And last but not least, I'm going to pick up our last A bead. All right, so that was row row four. I'm going to bring row four back. 1A, 3D, 1A. So row five, we're going to do 2A, 2D, 2A. And on one side, you get to, you get the luxury of just a good old even count turn. Here's the two Ds. And 
And last but not least, we've got two A's. So here's that one. And, and then we're here. And we need another bead, but we have no, nowhere else to go, right? So here's the odd count turn over again. I'm just going to go through this bead here. Pick up my new bead. This is my last bead of row five, my A that I couldn't get on there. And just come back through that bead there. That's the one that was our last up bead from row four or five, sorry. Um, and then from here, you just want to choose one of these. And I tend to choose the outer one, but it actually doesn't matter. You can choose the inner. Let's do the inner this time. You just want to choose one of those beads that's below. And then come up through, if you can get through all three. Um, it's easy to do on these big beads. Sometimes on the Delicas, um, it's a little harder to go one by one. But then just turn, come back through. And there we go. And so that's the end of row five. So here's what I want to point out one quick thing that can be confusing. We just finished row five and we're actually starting row six. But if I came back and I sat down and I said, oh, I'm going to count my rows to see where I was. I went count one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I finished row six and start beating row seven. And but what really happened was that was the end of row five. And now I'm starting row six. So hopefully that helps somebody. Um, and that's, I guess, kind of where the left, right, left, right thing can help too. Um, you can sort of figure it out from there. But I want to start row six now. And so I'm going to A, D, B, D, A. So here's our A. Oops, and here's the Ds. And here's a new color, B. And then D. And then A. All right. So one one trip back, you're always going to have a really easy time, just regular good old even count. And then on the other side, there's that odd count turn. So now row seven, you got the two A's. Let me just check the time, see how we're doing here. She's doing okay. And then we've got the 2B. And Cindy's saying she uses post-it notes. Yeah, that's one way to do it, for sure. It's a really good idea. And two more A's. And we're going to have an odd count. So here we are, one more odd count. Let's go through here. And we'll pick up that last A we've got to do. And if you can, I mean, sometimes it happens for me with the 11 Odelica where I can get through both. Go ahead and go through both of those beads. We know that's where we're heading. We can speed things up for you. And as you, as you get better and better and better at this, you'll find that you automatically take these shortcuts yourself. Just come through those three there. And then just pull tight and turn and come down through. And now we can start the next row. All right, so I'm going to check in and see um, how everybody's doing. I know there was some confusion, especially with the word chart. I'm hoping that got figured out or I didn't do something wrong there. <laughs> but um, I can go from here. We can go and just maybe switch to Delicas. We can also show finishing. We can show um, a restart. So yeah, Danielle. Um, there, there definitely there's a, a small issue with the handout, and so I think we'll what we'll do is we'll just repair it, um, and uh, post it again next week. But I think you should just continue on with your path. Okay. Uh, and at this point, it'd be great because you are working with big beads, so everyone could see. Um, but if you could compare it to the actual um bracelet, 
um, how much yeah. smaller it is when they're going to be working is a great idea. Yeah, so here's... Flip it over so it's going the same way. But roughly you're looking at that. And I might have had the... Let's see which side I'm looking at here. Yeah, the starting side. Um, pretty different. <laughs> so yeah, delicas are, they're tiny. They're really tiny beads. You're looking at maybe like half that size, but they're so beautiful to work with and you get such a flowy result. They're just so nice. It's really flowy. And Danielle, um, someone did ask, how wide is that at um, this, this point? This piece? Yes. Um, it is, looks like about half, it's a hair over half an inch. Like it's Half an one, inch. Yeah. Okay, this Not is definitely for the intermediate beaters. Yeah. But it's definitely doable. I mean, it's, it's not, um, I would say once you get that odd count turned down, there's not, a, not a really big difference between doing an even count design. So I wouldn't let, let it being odd count scare you. And I could do an even count version of it by adding one row to the side. So, um, of course I would need to run that back through and reprint, um, all the charts, but it would not be hard to do if that's something people want. I can pop that into the Facebook group later because I know odd count can, odd count takes longer, right? So to get a finished piece, you're sitting there stitching for a lot longer. And sometimes that can be really frustrating. So sometimes we just want an instant result. I get it. <laughs> I totally do. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, um, Carol and a few other people have pointed out the delicas are just lining up so neatly. They do. They really do. I love those. Um, Jen Jennifer has said that the odd count turn definitely gets to her. Um, yeah. Thank goodness this is going to be recorded because she needs to go back all the time and uh, get the help, which is greatly yeah. appreciated. So you know, go ahead, Danielle. So I'm going to let you continue um, because obviously there, there are some people who are beating along mm -hmm. and some people who are going to get to the point where they're going to like, how do we finish this? Gotcha. I can finish. Um, I mean, I could show the finishing on here if this is a better format to see, or I can bring this one over and we can make a go of finishing on this one. Um, the directions are the same regardless. We can do both probably actually if there's time. Um, but I've got these out. I could show it here and then we can show it again with the small. Definitely yeah. do that, Danielle. Yeah. Okay. So um, to finish it, what you want to do is we're going to just start doing a taper to decrease. So uh, already, depending on what side you ended on, you're going to have one side pointing up and one side that's not. Um, so depending on where you are, you just want to start getting it to where you're adding one less bead every time. And so the left off place here, I just did a turn to make sure that I'm exiting from the up bead that's on the inside. So uh, let me show you what I mean on that. On this one, we're going to switch to the tail. And that threaded really quick. And you can even finish it, you know, finish your ends before you've finished your bracelet too. It's the way to change it up. But um, on your starting side, on your ending side, you may end up with just the, the these being your up beads, right? So on your starting side, what you'll want to do is weave to exit from this bead by going back through. Do you want to be heading back in that direction? So I'm just going to go down through this bead here. And back up through this one adjacent. All right. And just turn and come back down through this way. So now we're where we want to be heading that direction out of this bead. You just need to do another little, it's kind of like the odd count turn. And then from here on, I just worked with color A just to match what's going on. And just keep going. There you go. So now you have four, or sorry, five feet. 
So what I'm going to do from here is exit from, I need to head this direction, right? So I'm going to go back and do that same turn. And it's just to get me back in, into that spot where I'm going the other direction. If you feel like you can see your thread when you do turns, spin it like that and it'll hide your thread. And here we go. We're just exiting from there. And we'll pick up. And there we go. And the best part is it becomes even count sort of when you're when you're doing this, you have clean edges. So this is the same thing over and over again, the same steps, but just performing them one bead in every time until we get down to just two. And just pick a bead there. Come up through this one. And then turn. So I'm just going to roll those. And now we're down to three. So we're almost done. A little turn in here. back up through this bead and every time I, I do this little spin it helps me hide that thread so you don't see it as much here we go two more and so that's the goal you want to taper down to where you've got that point right there and once you've got that do the same thing again to weave so you're exiting from from that bead that tight okay so that's where you add your chain and my chain's going to be really thin i um put in the handout a couple options one is the silver like a, I think this is paper clip chain. Now the width of this is much more, um, much closer on the small Delica. It's going to be a little thin here, but um, on the small Delicas, it worked out really nicely. So what I did is I just went through and treated it like a bead. And you could also do this with, um, for example, um, a closed jump ring would be one thing you can do. And if you don't have any of those, I had an idea um, I have one to show you that was done on a different piece, but I had this crazy thought the other day that what if I just made a little figure eight and use that to end your peyote. So this is a class we're doing in December, and this is a surprise ending that I'm going to show for that, but I'll probably upload it as a separate document just in, in advance because this class by itself is going to take <laughs> like the whole hour. But you see that little figure eight I made with 22 gauge German style wire. I used bale forming pliers and I literally just made made a split ring and then started going the other direction on the on the bale forming pliers. You can stitch it in and give yourself you would only need one on a design like this. So um I will post that as soon as I get it done. So that's another thing you can do, but the easiest path to being done with something like this is close jump ring or chain that doesn't have an open link. So let's get our chain and let's attach it. Let me bring that out and find some flush cutters. Actually, yeah, here's my flush cutters. Thought I hid them for myself. All right, so I'm just gonna cut. Yeah, I'll go, let's go with this much. Okay. I'm just gonna move those beads out of the way. We don't need our beads anymore. 
Have a little pieces there. Okay. So um, again, this is going to look a lot thinner on the big beads, but keep in mind on the Delica, it's going to be perfect. So just go through your chain, bring that down. And from here, we just want to go through the next bead. So that's all you got to do. Then you want to reinforce that. In order to reinforce it, just go and do that little turn. And in some cases, like with this one, since we're just doing two, I might just go all the way over here and then come right back through everything up here. Do that one more time. Make it extra, extra strong. And then just weave in. To weave in your, your thread, all you need to do is go through a bunch of beads and make some turns. Make about three turns and then trim. I mean, you'll have a really solid weaving in. And so I'm going to do a turn there to make my side bead stay in, in its place. And then from here, I just carry on and finish the design the other direction. And probably only need to do one, one repeat of the pattern with beads this size. These beads are so crazy big. Danielle? Wanda's dying to know, could you stack um, two or maybe even three chains to fill that space? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea, Wanda. You could totally do that. You could just have like a bunch of them just go side by side in there. <laughs> that would look really cute. I wish I thought of that earlier. You can go back and add it. Yeah, that's a neat idea. And I think it also really helps that, um, like I was saying before, if you use a closed, a closed chain, because that is thread and the chances of it pulling through aren't, you know, it's it's hard. an oval jump ring would be the best if you're gonna do something with an open but, but yeah yeah and bigger chain you know you could always add bigger there's so many chains that you can choose from so i just happen to have a bunch of this because i liked it and bought a bunch of it i have it in gold and they have a gold color and then for for my i'll take one of these other bracelets off the ornament but what i did is i threw a jump ring on the end of the chain and then i put on a lobster claw on one of the sides. So let's see, let's take this one off. And then let's show that ornament making. And I did use a little bit of tape back here, but you don't have to use tape. You can always use something different. There we go. So there's one side with that connection done. and. It looks really good. It seems to be like a perfect fit. And on this side, the same. And you could even drop a little dangle to help you put it on if you want to. This makes it adjustable because you can adjust the length of these chains so that it will be any size you like it to be. The finished length, in case you want to know before a clasp is on, is five and a quarter. And then by the time I get all of the tapering on both sides and the clasp um with the taper it brings it to almost six and then with the clasp it brings it to almost eight so that's with all the chain if i was to use the last link on it so definitely a really cool way to make it a gift that would be also a good way to sell them because you can hang the hang these on your little um display and they'll fit anybody because of the way they're made so um Let's see, we can make our, let's make an ornament really quick. I, I have paper, everything ready. Is there any questions about the beading? I know there was um, something we need to figure out um, about the word chart there. So I'm, I'm hoping that's something easy. <laughs> Danielle, we'll, I, I promised everyone we'll take a look at the word chart and uh, we'll, we'll send, we'll set up a new version of it. It was just rows in one and two that are a problem. Um, but when you see it, you'll know. I have a feeling I know what happened. I bet it's starting from the bottom on your printout and this one starting from the top. That happens when I switch computers um, because I have bead tool installed on both of my laptop and my other computer. And when I go to the other one, it prints out because the settings on one of them might not be the same as the other. So that- Totally be... understandable. It was bound to happen I sooner did. or later. I know, but 
I shouldn't work from my old printouts. I've been trying to save papers. So this is one of my like versions. It's the same pattern. If what, th what I think happened, happened. Um, it's the same pattern, but what's going on is it's building it from down here. So you'll have four, 3D and 4A. Everything I showed you will still work, but you're gonna have, you're working this way instead of that way. <laughs> Okay. I've fallen victim to that before. I've actually um, done that in a live class before in person. And the friend, she became a friend, but she was an accountant. And she was like, you know, you said you said you were starting from the bottom, but it doesn't match the picture. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was so embarrassed. Danielle, yeah, I th I, if if that's the um if that's the issue, then a couple people will be able to just get going um knowing that so it'd be great if someone could give it a little test while we're still here and i wanted to share um kim carnes just said something that i would say um i would only gift this bracelet to someone who would really appreciate it yeah because these are epic i mean these take me several hours to make this one i've been working on this since tuesday so yeah give it to somebody who um special knows what level of effort went in to creating that for you because Definitely, definitely true. So the ornament is super easy and super fast. And and for you guys that love paper, I love paper. I'm always going to the scrapbook section. And so I grabbed a bunch of these. I love the, like the tartan on this one. <laughs> this came out really cool. So this can be done with any, absolutely any paper you want. And you can mix it up, which is something that I did. I did some solids because I wanted my, um, my pattern to kind of have a solid to sit on. And then I just kind of framed it with, so you need three circles, basically three, and it can be in any order you'd like. And they have these in the, um, the scrapbooking section. It's like, okay, so it's where you would see these sliding cutting boards, you know, the Fiskars boards and all those. I got this from that aisle. And um, I've used these for a lot of things. Like one time I had to punch 500 circles to make ice cream cones for my son's class <laughs> they were doing an ice cream cone project. oh my gosh i was tired of that it takes a long time to make 500 but that's what these these are super handy for i should have used a cricket i know but for what we're doing today this is the perfect thing for it so just go ahead and get your pattern going so there's one and let's do some of the pretty this one on the inside And just punch. And last but not least, I'm going to do a back. Or maybe it'll become the front. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Don't need that anymore. We'll grab one of any kind of hole puncher you got. Anything is going to work fine. And then I'm going to do. Let's have this be the inside. This can be, that'll be my back. And that's got the flower. So we'll make that my front. I kind of want it to hang like maybe just like that. That works. And then just any ribbon. I keep scrap ribbon from presents and I reuse it. What I might do on this one is try to get it through a second time. And if you bring your loop, it's, this is going to be a really big version of it, but kind of connect your ends here and make your loop even. And bring your loop up just kind of like that. And then right at the end, bring those ends through it. And get a pretty little lark's knot there in your design and if you go the um the loop the other side it'll make that if that's important to you to have it be at the front you can flip it the other way but yeah so that's pretty much the ornament to get your bracelet to fit it what i did it was really easy i just clasped my bracelet at the tightest point so we find that one so at the most tightest point there 
and then just bring it over the circle. And it won't stay put for you until you secure it. But one of the ways you can secure it is to just kind of tape it to the back. And if you don't want to put tape on your bracelet, because I didn't want to tape up my bracelet, what I did was I grabbed another hole punch. And this was honestly, truth be told, just an excuse for me to punch paper because I really wanted to do it. <laughs> so, and actually I let my son do a bunch of these and he, he had a really nice time just making a bunch of snowflakes and dropping them on the floor everywhere. But you can take your little snowflakes and use those to secure to the back. So, and they just put a little tape top and bottom like that and it'll stay on there. Let me grab my other one to show you. And if it's not working out for you, if it's wiggling, you can do two. I ended up doing two on this one because I felt like it was really, really moving on me. That one came out really cool. And this one I have a plan for. I'm actually going to carry this down and give it to my sister-in-law when I see them uh, in next week. So yeah, this one came out really good. You can match your paper to your colors, you know, have, have all that kind of fun and So any questions about um, this or anything else that I showed today where we've still got a good amount of time so I could even show some of the pattern again or we could uh, we could demo starting it from the bottom if that's helpful. I have a feeling that's exactly what happened. Oh, if Marguerite wants to know how I get on my Christmas list, Marguerite, I will send you one. You can just find me on Insta or in uh, our Facebook group. These are really fun. I love these. And if you wanted to see the, I don't have the red ones because um, they actually were made by uh, Carol Carmen Jewelry. She, I sent her the pattern and I'm like, hey, I need to make like six of these. Can you make two for me? So she made this one and she made this one for me. So the big pictures though are on our, um, uh, we put them in the Facebook group and we put them in, uh, they will be, I think they might be in the blog. I haven't checked yet, but I know Carmen was putting them in there. So they'll probably be there and I'll post them on my insta too if you want to see big pictures of all of the colors but yeah so I'm just waiting for questions anybody got any for me just a quick one yeah. Danielle um would you make a matching envelope or would you pack that in a box oh gosh I mean you could do anything really um they have really beautiful craft boxes in the same aisle where I got the punches you could also get a, like a greeting card, you know, or even make a greeting card and fold it into the greeting card and then just have maybe a little washi tape to make this stay inside of it. And I think that would look really cool too. You just like tape it like that. And um, I think that would be a really good idea actually to put it in a greeting card. And you wouldn't need extra padding, but you might want to put some extra postage on it. If you're going to mail it, I'm trying to think of if it would get crushed on the mailing envelope or not. It might. You might want to pad it with like some of that, like packing foam or something. So maybe a box would be better just to protect your beads if you're mailing it. Yeah. And that uh, Marguerite was just saying, can't you just see it in a drawstring bag? That would be very cool too. That would be very cool. Yeah. I agree. No, that's really fun. So, Danielle, um, Two, two things. Um, one, we have a really special class next week that you know a lot about. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, maybe you want to share some of the new ones. Yeah, so we uh, next week have Mark Montano is teaching um, these crystal sparkle feather earrings. And so what he did is he's going to cut a, a, a feather pattern out of leather, feather leather. <laughs> I was like, I was trying to get that right. Um, and he gave the pattern um to you guys it's in if you if you've signed up for the class and you know where like you usually find the pdf he put the pattern there so you can get the pattern and buy the scrap leather they sell these like bags of scrap leather that i did not know they had these at michael's but this is the coolest thing it's it's remnants so you get this goodie bag of like just really cool stuff in there and so pull out one of those cut out that pattern and then he's going to show you how to paint it how to put flatback crystals on it and then how to add some chain and some drops and suspend them as the most just boho chic earring. It's going to be like my favorite thing. I'm definitely going to want to make a bunch of those. So that's November 10th, um, next week, next Friday at this time, or same, same time for this. And then, um, then we're doing an ornament on December 1st, but I'm skipping something. I'm skipping these. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Still snowflakes. Sorry. Snowflakes. Right. Okay. So we've got the 10th and then um, we're doing the snowflakes the week after that. Uh, next Friday. So the 17th, right? Um, it's going to be this this design. We, guys, we can do these in all kinds of colors. And they look really cool on. I, I I've been wearing them. And um, I think that they have this is the neatest style. And you get to bring in some really cool check crystal. This is uh, an eight millimeter check crystal in the center there. We'll do a brick stitch on a bead. Herringbone. And the cool thing about this design is every step that you do in the creating it, looks cute by itself. So you could just like, you could stop there and be done and not have to do the spikes on it if you wanted to, but it it's a really cool, it becomes single column herringbone as we start to go around. So that's something really fun to see, to see done. And it will also, um, I know you guys will get inspired and change the design and make it different and better. It'll just be kind of like a, a brain teaser for, oh, that works, that works, that works. And you'll, you'll just have so many ideas. So that one is the November. Then we have the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. So we'll skip a Friday. But then we're back on December 1st with ornaments. So um, this is so cool. <laughs> I loved making this one. It's a crystal netted ornament. And we'll show how we did this. But then in class, I was also going to show tips and tricks for how to make it fit any bulb, any wine bottle. I'm going to show you how I came up with this and um, all the pitfalls that I came across when I was trying to figure out how to do that part. Um, and it was, I came up with a little formula that I'll share for how you can make it work for any size with, um, with the ring still kind of fitting the top of whatever it is you're trying to suspend it from. And um, how to make it look fuller versus like the stretched out net. This is just a really fun, kind of mesmerizing and surprisingly, like I really enjoyed making it. I thought it was going to be tedious, but then when I started going at it, I was like, hang on, this is really, really mesmerizing. I want to just keep making more of them. And I did make a couple others I'll show that day. And then we have bubbles. This one was a request. And this is the one I was holding up earlier when I was showing you how to do these ends. Um, I was just playing it kind of ignore that this is a work in progress. I'm developing something and it's not a hundred percent yet, but I'm playing with how to finish it is kind of like a little surprise and then the bubbling of course this was a request we got from a bunch of you guys asking to see how to make like these stick up and then I'm going to not not only show this but I'm going to show what other things look like when you do different counts so we can talk about how you can make your counts look how you want them to be and like this could be a barrette or something it would really look cool in your hair for the holidays and so that's that one. And then um, I don't have it in front of me, but we'll, our last class of the year for December, we're going to do some pearl knotting using the good broad thread. So I I figured out a way to do a gorgeous classic pearl knot. Using this makes it so much easier. And I have a two strand method that, um, that I like to do that works really beautifully with us. So that'll be the, um, the December class right before the holidays, right before we, we break for, um, the holiday season there and then now i'm on january <laughs> how'd that happen i don't know now suddenly we're in 2024 it's like super scary if you think about it time is flying flying by yeah so um that's that's in a nutshell and uh thanks for sticking with me i know it's, this was a hard one this was a tough one um so you guys are good sports and uh, i will see you um after so so next week uh, i'll be there in the chat with you guys for mark and then i'll see you guys back for our snowflakes uh, after that so happy beating guys thank you oh beautiful cynthia <laughs>